Right, good afternoon. It's the uh, fourth day here in North Dakota. First day I had a couple does real close. And my buddy Carl shot a buck. Day two and three were pretty much uneventful. Except for I did have a hawk try to attack me on day two. But really nothing else worthy of showing. So here it is day four. There's two deer down in camp so far. Uh, Garrett Prawl's wife Samantha got one a doe yesterday. Um, they're actually hunting with me today. They're a few hundred yards back in that direction. You guys might recognize this spot from last year. Garrett and I hunted this spot right here and then Garrett shot a nice buck right here. We were uh, set up in some trees right over my shoulder here. Today I'm moving in just a little bit more so I can shoot to these lanes here. There's a couple uh, fresh scrapes that are active right now. Garrett found them scouting uh, today or yesterday, one of them. But anyway, they're going in to try and cut deer off down that way if they make it by me. And I'm here to kind of cut them off from coming this way if they don't make it to Garrett. Today's weather is uh, much cooler than it's been. It's windy, I think it's in the low 50s. Hopefully the deer are moving. Garrett hunted yesterday afternoon and saw quite a bit of deer activity and the winds were like 30 and 40 mile per hour winds. Today the winds are much less, it's still breezy, but hopefully the deer are going to be moving. They're used to it, it's North Dakota, it's always windy. Anyway, enough talking, let's get up in the tree and start hunting. We just had a little six-pointer come in. Didn't even hear him come in. I just had to look down on the left, and there he was, 20 yards. He came in right to my tree and was sniffing the cord I pulled my bow up with. I went ahead and grabbed my bow just in case he had some other bucks with him, but apparently he's by himself. 
he eased off up the trail through the woods. So it's gonna sit tight. It's about that time the deer start moving. And uh, I guess he's proof. You see anything? Yeah, I um, I started to set up in those trees there, and I moved to these this group right here because it looked like more cover. I should have stayed right there because it was a pain getting around all the deer I kept seeing. I had a seven o'clock, a six pointer came down right in front of me, and I started to shoot him, and I was like, Nah, I don't want to shoot him. So I messed around with a little bit and got my bow and just playing around. He wandered off. A few minutes later, I hear something walking behind me, and I'm like, uh-oh. I look over my shoulder, here comes a big doe. I thought it was a big doe. I was gonna shoot her. 
she'd come right to the base of the tree and sniffing where I'd walked in. And it would have been like a five yard shot. And I kept looking at her, I was like, oh man, she looks like she's a young doe. And I kept looking at her big ears and I was like, yeah, she's, she's a little on the small side. So uh, I let her walk off. And then I saw a big doe cross the path up here. And I don't know where she went to. And then uh, about 20 minutes, or like just after 8 o'clock, about 25 minutes before the end of light, had a little forker come down sniffing the limbs and stuff. Went right by at 20 yards. I could see the tines coming, uh -huh. and I thought it was a bigger buck. And I got my camera ready and got my bow ready, and then he comes out. His body looked bigger than the first six point I saw, but um, I let him walk on by too, and hoping that the bigger boy would come along. But man, it was a fun hunt. I, my knees got shaking a couple of times when the deer would come in. I can't believe none of them looked at me because I was, I was like right above them. I wasn't very high, three sticks up, and they never looked at me, but they they kept smelling where I'd walked. But it was fun. How about you guys? Well, so we got into that spot and we took that Southern Moor trail first. Mm -hmm, the one we made a missed turn on? Yeah, and the trail was, I mean, it's like beating into the dirt. But as we kind of went along it, I mean, out where it starts, it's all matted down grass and stuff. Yep. Actually, to the, the south of that whole region, yep. it was pretty pounded down too. But as it started going on that trail, there was like, a limb laying across kept going a little bit further there was never really like fresh tracks on it mm -hmm. so we got in a little bit and we basically just made the same line we did when we were scouting it earlier yeah hooked up north and then we got to pretty much the area that we had scouted for that little opening mm -hmm. and it looked really good I mean, I thought for sure we'd see like 510 deer and that we had one doe come from the north of the marsh so I was walking across the cattails and then she got into the woods and came by at like 30 yards probably the closest she got but it was a lot of it's pretty thick and uh would you have shot her if she'd been closer maybe if we had good footage and yeah if she'd been like 15 yards instead of 30 yeah I might have done it but it was still early it was like six six o'clock six thirty so we still had a couple hours left yeah. I thought that was just gonna be the first of many I only had one more encounter with a deer during my trip to North Dakota, and that was on the last afternoon. A small buck walked up under me, and although I didn't feel my tag, it was a great week. I got to hang out with all the guys from Tethered, Garrett Prawl and his wife, Samantha Prawl, Ranch Ferry and his son, our buddy Adam Olson from Minnesota, and let's not forget Dylan Hazen, who laid down some incredible footage for the Tethered crew. With that said, we got a lot of great action coming from Minnesota and Wisconsin. And don't forget about the Cali Chronicles, some videos from her tracking experiences will be coming up as well.